Widespread readers, I am here with the talented and hilarious Kevin McKee from Thousand Air. Kevin, thank you so much for being here to uh, chat with us today and share your insights about personal finance. No problem. Thanks, Ashley. I'm very excited to be talking to you. Um, I'm a big fan of Thousand Air, especially your amazing videos that you do. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about Thousand Air and uh, what inspired you to start blogging? Yeah, so Thousand Air started with... Um, I kind of realized that there wasn't a lot of personal finance information out there directed towards young people and specifically um, in a way that young people can digest it easily. So there's a lot of blogs uh, with a lot of text and writing, uh, but a lot of people our age don't really consume media that way. So I thought video would be good. Um, so and music definitely is a way that uh, I think a lot of us can consume stuff uh, better, more in a more fun way than than with uh, text. So I started making some videos, and uh, they're pretty well received in the personal finance community. I, I tried to be as funny as as possible, which uh, you know sometimes if you ask my fiance, I've never been funny, but. Uh, I think I've been moderately successful here or there. So um, I, I do definitely think that there's still a huge gap that I tried to fill and have filled to an extent. But um, in the personal finance world, there's such an opportunity for people to really direct their message to young people using uh, you know video, audio, any different kinds of uh, mediums. Uh, there's definitely a lot more space for people to get in there. So hopefully we see that, that gap being filled here in the near future by other personal finance bloggers. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. And I would have to say, uh, I agree with your fiancé. You are, or no, I don't agree with your fiancé. Uh, you are hilarious. Um, I mean, you've hosted the Plutus Awards before, and I mean, everybody in our community just knows you for your um, your absolutely hilarious videos and your, your fun take on personal finance. It's uh, Thank you. It's, just a fantastic way to take something that can be such a tedious and boring subject and make it make it fun. Um, yeah. So I know you've been blogging for a while, and you have uh, probably read your fair share of money saving advice, and you've shared money saving advice with your readers. Um, what is the best money saving tip that you've ever heard? Um, so you know, obviously, there's a lot of tips. I think you know, right now, I'm I'm about to get married. And there's a lot of expense that goes along with getting married. Uh, my fiance and I are paying for the wedding ourselves. Um, as far as, I mean, so I'll answer this two ways. Number one, uh, everything's negotiable. So, you know, we're working with different vendors. And, and these are, you know, on my blog, I don't really concern myself much with how to save, you know, $2.50 with coupons or, or things like that. But... When you're talking about spending, you know, fifteen hundred dollars on your florist and thousands on your, you know, reception venue, um, that's where it, I think it makes sense to negotiate. You know, you want to get different competing bids from other companies, um, and then use them against each other. Tell everyone. I used to feel bad, like, oh, I don't want these people to know that, you know, I'm looking at other companies as well. But if they know, they'll give you a better deal. And then when you get a deal from the vendor you don't want to use, you go to the one you do want to use and say, hey, um, they're going to give me a cheaper price or they're going to throw in free delivery and setup or things like that. Right. So uh, definitely negotiation is really useful when you're dealing with these larger ticket items. Uh, even things like if you're buying a TV, you know, get... Amazon, Walmart, and Best Buy to compete and you know get the lowest price with the most convenient delivery option. But um, really, more than saving money, my focus is really on generating more income and uh, you know having more revenue. So that's why you know I do have a full time job. Uh, I have Thousand Air. I have other uh, different businesses going and. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about diversifying investments a lot. I like to diversify income and try to get as much money coming in from different places as possible because, uh, you know, the more money you make, the less being frugal and saving matter because you can only save so much money. If you make 40000 a year, 
you could go from spending thirty thousand a year to twenty five, but you're gonna hit a limit where you can't get more money from saving. But there is no limit to how much you can make by getting earning more money, getting more income and revenue. So that's where I really try to focus my blog and my life on is generating more revenue and having more money to do the things I like, like travel, uh, you know, spend more time with my fiance, with my dogs. Um, you know, I can really improve the quality of my life uh, a lot more by having more money than by pinching pennies. Interesting. Well, I mean, obviously you're very uh, entrepreneurial. Um, what's the best advice you'd have for somebody who is, you know, trying to start their own business? Um, I, if anyone else has great advice for me, I'd love to hear it. Um, you know, I've made some money here and there. Again, I, I do still have a full-time job, and that's where I make most of my money. Um, but I do think when you're starting a business, one of the biggest things you have to look at at the very beginning is... Um, a lot of the businesses I do are based on technology, you know, websites, apps, things like that. So the question that a lot of people don't ask right away is, how am I going to make money on this? Um, I had a discussion last night with a friend of mine who has this idea for an app, um, and he has all these great ideas about why people would use it and, you know, why everyone's going to love it. And I said, well, how are you going to make money on it? And he he didn't have an answer, and that was the model back, you know, ten years ago. It was build something and get people to use it, and then some big investor is going to come in and buy it from you. And you know that can happen. It happened with you know Facebook bought that WhatsApp company a while back, and and it can. But realistically, that's a very small percentage of startup businesses that are going to get that kind of a, a buyout. So. And you have to have a lot of money to get to that level of a user base without actually making money. So uh, the question I have for everybody and for myself is how can I make money with this today instead of you know two, three, five years down the road? I don't have that much time to wait. Yeah, I think that's a very uh, that's a very valid question and definitely something that uh, all entrepreneurs should consider as they as they start their own business. Um, obviously, you know, between your full-time job and, you know, starting your own business and blogging and planning a wedding and, and all of that, um, I'm curious to know if there's any uh, tools or apps that you use to make your life easier or help you manage your time and, and be successful in all of your endeavors. Uh, one of the things that I've started using, um, so one of the new things I'm not necessarily new, but things that I've started doing more to, to increase income is working on web design. And uh, as I design more websites and I'm helping you know, more people get their uh, small business websites up, uh, I'm getting a, a much larger portfolio of websites that I need to access and, and I need to do maintenance on them and, and log in to change something. So um, there's a, a pretty cool service called uh, Manage WP. And for WordPress sites, um, it it will it will do daily backups for you. You can just log into your managed WP account, and you can log into any of your WordPress sites you use. Um, you can update plugins from there. You can update WordPress itself when it has an update. So uh, you know that's one of the tools that, as a web designer, really helps me to manage my portfolio of websites without actually having you know a list of you know here's all my sites and here's all the um, all the passwords and logins, and uh, it's a much easier way to just access all my sites in one place. That sounds really useful. I'll, I'll have to check that out. Um, you know, obviously, I'm sure you have a lot of clients that you have to talk to, and that you know, keeping in touch with family and friends is really important. Um, you and I are chatting through Skype right now, so I'm just curious to know, you know, what are some of your favorite ways to use Skype? Uh, you know, Skype is something that I. I think I really got introduced to it when back in 2008 when I graduated from college and went to Europe. I spent five weeks over there, uh, you know, after college before starting my my full time job. And uh, you know, when I'm in America, I can use my cell phone. I can use you know whatever I need. But uh, when I was over there, when I wanted to communicate with people back home, uh, you know, 
service like Skype was a great way for me to be able to communicate and and do it where it's not just you know on the phone. You know, you can buy uh, I don't know the calling cards, stuff like that. You can do a lot of different things, but um, having that face to face interaction when you're you know a world apart is really nice to. Uh, Nice to have that opportunity. So, uh, hopefully, in the future, I'll be traveling abroad more. Um, you know, my honeymoon will be in in Mexico. Although uh, I don't plan on calling anyone back home when I'm on my honeymoon, That's but if I wanted to, <laughs> Skype would be you know a great way to do that. Fantastic. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to chat with us. I uh, I really appreciate all your all your insights and everything you've had to share. Great. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks, Kevin.